All right, we'll continue giving folks just another minute or two to hop in, um, during which I'll address the question that occurs at every webinar, will this be recorded? Yes. Um, will it be available? Yes. We're also going to be updating the FAQ page um, with the answers to your questions and the slides will be available. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and, and jump in. Um, as you have questions, please feel free to pop them in the question and answer uh, box. If you prefer them to be anonymous, make sure to ask them anonymous. Uh, you're also welcome to, to put uh, questions into the chat. So uh, welcome, this is the question and answer webinar about the School of Data Science and Society Seed Grant Program. Um, my name is Leanne Samsa. I'm the director of our Office of Research Strategy. And the main goal for this program is to empower data-driven discovery. Um, the School of Data Science and Society is excited to host this uh, seed grant program as a rolling uh, program. It's designed to link and grow the existing culture of interdisciplinary data science research and excellence here at Carolina. And um, for those trickling in, um, a couple housekeeping pieces. Um, you are welcome to pop any questions into the Q&A box. You're also welcome to use the webinar chat. This is recorded and it will be available um, afterwards as well as the slides. And we're gonna be updating the FAQ page um, that is available with the RFP. Um, with any of your questions. So a couple key dates uh, to keep in mind. We released this call last week, um, October 30th, and um, the, the pitch deck and full proposal invitations are all on a rolling basis, and the seed grant awards will be rolling as well. The major goals of this program are to generate new collaborations and resources that are gonna catalyze data-driven discovery here at Carolina. And with that, we want to unlock new research that has a clear path towards extramural funding or commercialization. Um, we're envisioning that the projects will likely fall into three main categories. Um, research in data science, data science for interdisciplinary research, and ethical, legal, and social issues of data science, so the LC of data science. And what do we mean by each of these categories? Um, research in data science is, broadly speaking, any of the innovations in data science techniques, algorithms, and methods that are made possible by bringing together multiple data science disciplines. Data science for interdisciplinary research is more of the applied space. So it's projects that are applying data science uh, techniques to solve a problem in a non-data science discipline. And then uh, leaning more into the humanities side, um, our LC of data science, our projects that explore the larger ethical, social, and uh, legal issues that uh, intersect with data science. So who's eligible to apply for the seed funding? Um, we do require that team leads are eligible to serve as principal investigators on external sponsored projects. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, what UNC's policies are, um, I can pop in the chat what they are, but um, basically if you're a permanent faculty member, you are automatically uh, eligible to be a principal investigator. If you're not, uh, you may need an eligibility waiver, um, but if you would be granted that waiver, then you are eligible as a PI for this program. We highly encourage applicants to partner with individuals outside of their home unit in order to pursue an interdisciplinary project. Um, we don't require it, but we struggle to envision situations in which you would 
be able to have a truly interdisciplinary project without partnering um, with somebody outside. Um, but to keep the language a little soft, we highly encourage it. And as a principal investigator, you can be listed on one concurrent application. Um, with this uh, having a rolling deadline, uh, we want you to hear back about your current idea before you put in a new application for a, a different idea. And additionally, there's, there's no limits to the number of applications where you can be a co-PI uh, or other non-supporting role. And to answer an immediate question in the chat here, um, are we distinguishing co-PI from co-investigator? For example, postdocs cannot be co-PIs, they can instead be co-investigators. That is correct. Um, co-PI is gonna be your principal investigator or your co-principal investigator if you have um, equal responsibility and, and input. A co-investigator has a um, contributing role to a proposal and you could have a postdoc as a co-investigator, but not a co-PI. Great question. And if you have questions about your specific team composition, um, feel free to ask me directly and we can work through it. Uh, details about the award. Um, we're looking to fund between zero and five of these for a combined total of about 200,000 each fiscal year. Um, we want you to have cost realism as you eventually put forward a budget for your, your scope of work. Um, you can imagine if we had two of these, it, they might be $100,000 each or maybe 150 each. If we have five of them, we're looking at more of the uh, $40,000 each range. Um, as on a rolling basis, the funds would be available as soon as three months after your full proposal is submitted, and these are non-renewable. Um, Carry forward is permittable, but you can't renew the proposal or renew the grant. And the kinds of things that are eligible expenses here include uh, research assistance, so the labor that you need to do research, and any necessary associated fringe tuition and fees if they're not covered by another source already. Um, project management support or coordination support, um, if that's uh, part of your potential um, project structure. Any direct costs that are associated with data access or purchase, um, consumable materials for research, research participant incentives, uh, consultant or service contracts, workshops on campus minus food, um, cloud credits, um, except for just straight data storage, um, and travel for project implementation or data collection. Okay, so that's broadly what who's eligible and uh, what the award structure is. For the application process, we have a bit of a unique process here. Um, we want to begin with a concept note. And this is a one page um, white paper, basically, using a template that we provide. And you send it to uh, the member of the SDSS Research Advisory Council, and we'll go over those on the next slide in just a moment, that has the most relevant expertise. These research advisory council members are effectively serving as uh, program managers or program officers that are screening ideas. And you'll meet with them, discuss your idea, potentially iterate on it um, at this relatively low risk, um, easy, uh, quick feedback concept note stage. If the research advisory council member feels your concept note is um, something that should be brought up with the full research advisory council, then you're invited to present your idea uh, as a pitch, which is about 20 minutes, 10 minutes of pitch and about 10 minutes of questions. And collectively, the research advisory council will decide if they want to advance it to the next stage. At that point, you can be invited for a full application which includes a research plan, work plan, scalability, references, budget, um, budget justification, et cetera. Um, that full, app, full proposal is uh, reviewed internally and decisions are made by SDSS leadership as to award. Uh, currently, our research advisory council contains these exceptional faculty members from across campus. Um, these slides will be available. You're welcome to go through and read them later. Um, this is also available on SDSS's website. But 
consider that these are the people for whom you'll send your uh, concept note for, uh, for feedback iteration and hopefully uh, an invitation to uh, pitch it to the full advisory council. And as mentioned before, once you're, uh, after you've done a pitch, um, you'll be invited potentially <laughs> to uh, submit a full proposal. And for that, um, we're looking for a three to five page project description. And the length would be commensurate with the, uh, the scope of work proposed. Um, references, a budget and justification, as well as a short term, short form CV or bio sketch for all of the key personnel. And um, you can use NSF format, NIH format, traditional CV, um, anything that communicates who the individuals are and their expertise. This is not intended to be a barrier, just a, a way for um, those who are going to be reviewing proposals to truly understand who it is um, they're, they're looking at. All right, so in the review process, um, the Research Advisory Council makes a decision about um, who will be invited to pitch, and uh, ultimately the SDSS leadership will make final decisions about um, which pilot projects will be awarded. Um, throughout, you may get feedback um, and changes communicated, and those will be communicated through, uh, through my office, uh, primarily as opposed to, you know, you're not going to get just a random email from a research advisory council having um, read your proposal. And we have a couple um, unique conditions of award. Um, you can expect your standard conditions like uh, keep track of the finances appropriately, spend appropriately. Um, we do want awardees to provide a research project update about six months into the award and to present uh, the project and its progress at at least one SDSS organized event, um, such as the Data Science Day that we had back in um, September. Uh, as closeout, we do require um, at, at least a, a two page final report describing uh, the project and its outcomes. So again, a couple key dates to, to point out. The call is, uh, it's out there, it's rolling. We're looking forward to applications. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and take any questions that arise. Okay, so I see a question in the, in the Q&A box. Um, do we need to include faculty and researchers from a range of disciplines? Um, it depends on your project. Um, you should have interdisciplinary expertise represented in the project that you're developing, um, but there's no need to include a range of expertise uh, of disciplines just to provide a range of disciplines. The project itself should be inherently interdisciplinary, and the people who are involved in it should represent those disciplines appropriately. Okay, so next question. Um, if a concept note has been denied, can we resubmit after revision? Absolutely. Um, the Research Advisory Council is comprised of um, some wonderful faculty members from across campus who are going to be enthusiastic about uh, providing feedback to help make the ideas as uh, as competitive as, pro as as possible. And that level of, um, of feedback, whether it's oral or written, um, is to everyone's advantage across campus as we're building out um, a, um, a robust data science environment. All right, next question. Do you recommend specific budget amounts that are more likely that are more likely to be funded? We recommend cost realism. Um, and part of the pitch phase is to uh, convince the advisory council of um, of your project and um, the approximate scale in which it's needed. Is there a preference for big data projects or is the substantive so substantive contribution of the project more important? Um, 
pitch it and let's find out. I'd love to see the ideas. Um, I, I will say we would, you saw that uh, we'd sort of bend projects into um, into three main categories. Um, let's see, I'll go back to that easily. Research and data science, data science for interdisciplinary research, and LC of data science. Um, you do want your big data project to align well with at least one of these. Um, so that we can consider comparable projects or at least comparable categories of projects together. Is there a preference between theoretical projects versus applied projects? Um, for that, I'm gonna turn back to the, the purpose of the program, which is to generate new collaborations and resources to catalyze data-driven discovery and to unlock new research that's going to have a clear path to extramural funding. Um, so if you have a theoretical project that has a clear path towards extramural funding or even commercialization, then that is just as attractive as an applied project with the, the same um, potential for attracting extramural funds. Uh, can non-UNC affiliates be paid for research labor? Um, Let's talk about that on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, it is not preferred. Uh, we do want these funds to stay at UNC. Um, we want to be investing in new collaborations and resources at Carolina, but there are some circumstances in which you, the unique expertise at a different institution or um, through a, uh, a consultant may be necessary, and that could be an al allowable cost. And if, if anyone finds a, uh, an answer unsatisfactory, ask it again, and uh, uh, I'll explain more. Okay, can the principal investigator be non-tenure track? Yes, provided that they meet the eligibility criteria for a principal investigator. So as long as a external sponsor and UNC would deem you a uh, an eligible principal investigator, yes, you can be non-tenure track and, and lead this. Okay, it seems we've reached a, a lull in the questions. Um, I'll give just another minute or two in case folks come up with um, another few. And um, forecast that when, when we did this pilot program uh, last year, um, while we didn't have, I can stop sharing the screen here. Um, While it wasn't on a rolling basis, um, we did have a networking event that sort of anchored the launch of um, of the seed program. And uh, we would love to be able to offer a networking event in the spring. Um, but in the meantime, this opportunity is open um, and we're looking forward to, to hearing concepts. Okay, seeing uh, no further questions in the chat or the Q&A box, um, I will thank you all for your time. This will be available. We'll put the answers to the questions that were asked into the FAQ document. The slides will be available on the SDSS website shortly um, as a PDF version. Um, 
And feel free to reach out to me with any uh, process questions or procedure questions, or if you're not sure which research advisory council member is the, the best one to send your concept to, um, I, I can certainly help connect you to, uh, to the best fit. All right. Thanks so much.